Welcome to lesson four. This video is all about how to configure a database for a bubble application. You will see an example of this, and we've also included some tips that will help with database optimization to ensure that your app always functions smoothly. So let's dive in. So when creating a database, it's always a good idea to plan it out properly because without proper planning, you may encounter some problems when your app begins to scale. And planning how to structure a database is a process that involves specifying the data types and data fields that your app will have. So what are we referring to when talking about data types and data fields? Well, let's make an example of creating or planning out a database for an Airbnb app. So we can start off by writing down two columns, data types as well as data fields. So data types are basically the types of data that usually hold other pieces of information. And we can call those pieces of information as data fields. To make this more clearer, an example of a data type is a user. And a user can have additional pieces of information or data fields, such as the name, the surname, email address, and gender. But since we are currently planning a database for an Airbnb application, a user will have other types of data fields, such as property and application. Another data field that a user can have specifically for an Airbnb app is a user type of whether or not the user is a host or a guest. So we can add that here as user type. So basically, this will determine whether or not the user is a host or a guest. Then they will basically be able to see all the types of properties that they can apply for on Airbnb. And if they would like to apply for the property, then they can submit an application. And if the user type is a host, then they will obviously be able to add some properties on the app. And they should obviously be able to see the applications that people are submitting. So another data type that an Airbnb application can have is a property. And a property can have numerous data fields, such as the name of the property, the address, the pictures of the property, the number of bedrooms, as well as the price, just to name a few. Then an additional data type is an application. And this is basically an application that the creator can send to the receiver for the type of property that they would like to get. Then an additional data type would be a conversation. And this would basically be a conversation between the recipient, the creator, and this data type will have a data field of basically a list of messages. Then a message itself should be its own data type. And this will basically have the message body, the creator, and the conversation in which this message belongs to. So now I'm sure you're starting to see that some of these data types or data fields are related to one another. So for example, a message will belong to a certain conversation. And a property, for example, will belong to a certain type of user, which has a user type of host. So as you can see, the data types and data fields are related to one another. And we'll see how these are linked within the Bubble database. So we're currently within the data tab in our Bubble app. And we're now gonna create all these data types and data fields that we created within Google Sheets within our database. And just to help you notice something, we can see that our data types will be listed here and the data fields will be listed here. So this is basically similar to how we have arranged them within Google Sheets. So for the user data type, we also have by default the email data field, but we'll create a new data field for the name and the field type should be of type text. Then we remember that we also had the surname. also of type text. And in addition, we had the gender. So now it's time to think carefully about how we're gonna structure our database with regards to a gender, because it can have either two options, male or female. 
So since this data field can have numerous options, one smart way of doing it is by creating an option set. So an option set will basically help us to create a list of options. So let's create here a gender option set. And then we can create a new option of male and female. And now that we've created this option set, we can go back to our data types and create a new field for the user called gender. And then for the field type, we're going to look for our option set, which we created and we named it gender. And we can click create. So as you can see here, this data field now has either two options, female or male, because we have linked it to this option set. And we can do the same thing for the user type. So we can create an option set named user type. Then we can create a new option. One is host and the other one is guest. And at the data types, we can create a new field called user type. And then we're going to link it to the option set that we created called user type. And again, you can see that it has two options, guest and a host. So this is one smart way of using option sets for our data types and data fields. In addition, we remember that our user data type had two other data fields, property and application. So since property and application are their own data types, we need to create them within our list of data types. So we can create a new type. And then we can go back to our user data type and create a new field called property. And then we're going to link it to the field type of property. But before we create this new field, we may need to click this checkbox, which basically makes this field a list of entries. And that's because, for example, a user may need to see a list of properties or a specific host may want to submit a list of properties to the application. So that's why it's important to click this checkbox for any data field that may need to have multiple entries. So now we can click create. Lastly, we had the application and that is also its own data type. So we can create a new type called application and then within our user data type, we can create a new field also called application, then link it to the data type. And since a user may submit multiple applications, we may click this checkbox to allow for multiple entries. And now our user data type has been completed. And that's basically how you create data types and data fields within Bubble. And as you noted, some data fields are linked to some data types. For example, the application data field was linked to the list of applications, which is this data type. So when creating a database, you may need to do a lot of linking. To show you one last example, let's create some data fields for the application data type. And we remember that the application data type basically had a creator, a receiver, and a property. And a creator and a receiver is basically a user and a property is also its own data type. So here we can create a new field called creator. And then obviously it will have to have the field type of user. The same thing with the receiver. Then in addition, we need to create a new field for the property and it will be linked to the property field type. So as you can see, this data type has fields that are connected to other data types, such as the user data type and the property data type. So this was basically an example of how to plan out your database and then create your database within the bubble application. And we've also seen how to use option sets 
when creating your database. Finally, I'd like to give you some tips about how to create a database for your application. So these are basically some suggested steps that you can use when creating a database for your application. So step one would be to brainstorm. So this is when you're thinking or brainstorming of the specific data types or data fields that are specific to your application. The next step would be to note down the specified requirements. So after you have brainstormed the data types and data fields you'll need, you now need to note them down. And this is basically when you're specifying the requirements of your database. So this is the same thing we did with Google Sheets where we specified our data types and data fields. After that, the next step would be to implement. So this is when you're actually creating the specific data types and data fields within your bubble application and also linking the option sets and data fields or data types together. The final thought I'd like to give you is about database optimization. So this basically refers to how your app performs. And this also involves how quickly the UI can read data from the database. So one tip is to limit the number of elements that need to be rendered on the screen. So if your app has to render a lot of elements that include a lot of data, then this can slow down your app. So for example, if your database has 2000 contacts, it may slow down your app if you're trying to show all those contacts within a list. And the second point is using capacity boosts. So on Bubble, you can purchase additional capacity boosts in order to make your app perform better. Then lastly, it's always a good practice to test alternative methods. In other words, if you see that how you currently have your app configured is not making your app faster, you may want to test out alternative methods that can make your app perform better. As a final note, you may want to check the Zero Code Conference series which has more tips about app performance and database configuration. And you can find the series by going to lab.zerocode.com slash courses. And then within the search box, you can type in conference. And it will be this one that says Zero Code Conference Series. And that brings us to the end of this lesson. And I hope that it helped you get a better understanding of how to configure your app's database. On the next lesson, we learn more about privacy settings which will basically help to secure your app's data. So thank you so much for watching this lesson and I'll see you in the next one.